Making games means prototyping a lot, and prototypes need to be fast. We prioritize speed because we do not know if we want this feature in our game or not. But prototyping also leads to writing code that is, let's say, of a poor quality. But does it mean that the code quality is unimportant when creating prototypes? Well, let's prototype together or start prototyping a civilization-like game. What features do I want to have here? I want to prototype a movement system so when I drag my mouse, I want to move my character in this direction. Also, I want to have a town management system, so something like when I click on a, a town, I want to have a UI that will allow me to create another worker. Now this will all be about creating a UI that will show up when I click on a worker and a UI when I click on a town. Okay, so here is the first uh, feature, moving a character when I drag my mouse. To prepare this system, all I did was create a prefab that contains a box collider that is on a separate agent layer and has a tag character and as a child it contains a sprite renderer so it is uh, centered uh, correctly on our map and I'm using some uh, tile maps to create the map and overall I have created this prototype in about 30 minutes here is the code that I am using to create a way to select my character as well as to move it now I bet you have a very vague idea of how it works and this is because the readability of this code is poor this is in a single script nothing is described so you would have to read line by line through this code to see what it does but the benefit that we have achieved is that we can easily test our movement system now it isn't very easy to find a bug here but it is in one script so the complexity is rather low so i can easily go to this script find a bug and fix it if I need to. Basically, the first if statement detects mouse button down event, detects the collider using the overlap point, and next it saves it as a uh, unit uh, game object in our class. And when I let go of a mouse button, I'm using a threshold uh, to detect if the distance is greater than the threshold. If it is, then I can assume that I can calculate a direction of this movement and then move my unit by teleporting it using transform.position plus equals the direction and basically that's it it took about uh, 30 minutes to create and i can easily test the game if it works correctly the feature that i want if it is what i want or not the problem is that the readability is poor and if i wanted to add to this code anything else it would be pretty difficult so the problem is that if I want to add to this code now, I can easily break the whole logic because all of those lines rely on how this method performs. If there is a bug in this logic, all of this code will stop working. Now what if we want to add the second part of the logic so that we want to select our towns? What we can do is simply add here the code. This will not be easy, but it is the fastest way to go. Now for ease of implementation of the second feature I have put different tags so character on the unit that can move and town on the building that I want to select and show some sort of UI. So this will be the UI for the, uh, building a town for our player and for a uh, town to build a worker. Now this is non-functioning, this is just for test purposes. So I am back in our unit movement script that I have created to test my movement logic. And now I know that I'm detecting a collider. So all I need to do is check if the unit or the collider detected is of type character or a town. So I will need to have a simple if else check. And again, I'm creating this prototype. So I want to write it as fast as I can. So if this is a character, I will still save the unit as a collider.game object else I will want to set it to be null but what I want to do is show UIs so I have this uh, build worker UI and this should only show when I am selecting a town so what I will do is select this set active and I will type true okay and for now let's deal only with this UI so if I haven't selected any collider I will set it to be false and this should work right well, not exactly. I have already created a, an error because I need to set this to be false when I select the character. Otherwise, I will still see the UI for the town when I am selecting the character. 
So again, as you can see, this is a very easy way to make mistakes if I want to add to this code that is already convoluted and it is difficult to read what each part of this code does. Okay, back in our Unity project, I will select the unit movement script and build worker UI will be the town UI and build town UI will be the farmer UI. And now if I press play, I will be able to see the UI when I click on the building. And if I click on the unit and move it, it will disappear. Again, if I click here, I can build. And if I click on the unit, it disappears. So again, we have quickly tested our functionality, but the quality of our code is decreasing. Uh, very soon, I will not be sure what each of part of this code does. And making those changes means that each of those if and else if statement is connected with each other so i'll need to ensure that if i said something true in one place i will have to set it false in another place okay so i would suggest that you try another way to create this additional logic okay i went back to our previous code where we have only our movement logic we have just created it and accepted it okay we want this to be in our game now I want to start prototyping our uh, building selection and town management logic so that I can show our UI. Before I do that, I will take a look at this code and let's say I will try to refactor some uh, parts of it so that I do not get confused what is what. So I know that this part is responsible for selecting our player. So I will right click here using uh, Visual Studio, I can quick actions and extract this method and I will extract the method, I will call it handle unit selection so this is the code responsible for selecting the unit now the code below here is responsible for unit movement so i will select all of this right click quick actions refactor it so extract the method and i will call it a handle unit movement okay so now i know exactly what is happening if i uh, click my mouse button down i will handle unit selection if I uh, let go of my mouse button, I will handle unit movement. Now one remaining part of the code is here. I don't want it to be here. I want to put it inside our handle unit movement. So I will add a guard con uh, condition. So if unit is null, I will simply return. Okay. And now if we save it, let's go back to unity. Okay. I can still move my characters, I do not have now selection of the town, but our code is now separated into two methods and that's something that allows us to say, okay, this handles unit selection, so possibly I should try selecting this method and modifying this method to add our town selection uh, method. So overall it took us two minutes to extract those two methods, but now we have much greater clarity what each of those methods do. Now another issue that we might face is, as you might recall, we have modified the, this method, but I have introduced one bug when we were selecting a unit to be moved, we haven't reset the UI to be hidden. So the issue with modifying this code that is already working is that we might break it by adding the new logic. So maybe we could go st a step further with this refactoring of this code before we start adding the new feature. Now the candidate for refactoring is this input.getMouseButton functions. So what we could do is make those methods public and use them with a different class that will handle getting the input from the player. So I will cut out this update part. And I have created a new class called unit selector. I will paste our uh, update method here. Now I do not have access to those methods. Also, the unit movement has those methods to get the mouse position as well as to get the collider. So I will cut out those methods, leaving this handle unit selection method without a collider to compare. Instead, I will pass here a game object uh, collider. And I will set, check the collider. If collider is not null, I will pass the collider as the unit. We can change the name later, but basically this will be the idea here. So now this will receive the collider. Now one last thing that we need to do is to add a check. So if unit is null or if unit is not on with the tag character, then we want to return. Otherwise we want to invoke this code. And we can go back to unit selector and we can uh, check in our get mouse button down. Again, the same logic. We are going to get the uh, screen to world point. 
and we are going to get the collider. I will remove the agent mask from your unit movement. I will paste it here so that now I will be able to detect the colliders and I will pass the collider dot game object here to this method. Now again, we do not have access to this. Let's take a look at the second method. So this was handle unit movement. Now this again accesses the camera screen to our position to get the mouse input. Instead of this, I will pass here the vector 3 and position so that this method doesn't have to handle getting the uh, mouse input from the camera screen to world position method. Instead, I will pass to it this uh, vector 3. So I'll go back to unit selection and I will need to pass to our uh, handle unit movement again uh, the same method uh, called. So I'll copy it and paste it here and I'll pass it the mouse position. But again, we cannot really pass it because we do not have the reference to our unit movement. And what we know so far is that the new logic that we want to implement wants to also handle the uh, collider or the game object when we detect it here in this first if statement. So instead of uh, calling the methods here or getting the reference inside the unit selector to our unit movement, and to the next class that we may want to create to show our town UI, I will create two unit event unity events. I will use the unity engine.events class uh, library, and I will create public unity event game object and vector three handle mouse click and handle mouse finished dragging. And now instead of calling the specific methods, I will use those events, and I will simply call this event question mark dot invoke. And I will call this, uh, pass this parameter, and the second thing will be this second parameter, uh, the second uh, unit event, and I will again invoke this. So now our unit selector will be able to detect the objects on this layer mask, the colliders, and it will pass this to this unit event. So now it doesn't need to know that there is a unit movement class that will want to use those uh, events. What we can do instead is we can save all those methods and go back to Unity. And now we have those two classes. I will select the object the player input that was driving our game and I will add here our unit selector. Now we can select the layer mask it was agent and town. And I can assign here the classes, so the objects that wants to be informed when we have clicked our button and if there is a collider underneath the position where we have clicked. So I will assign unit movement and the method that it was uh, handled in selection was when we have clicked our mouse and when we have finished dragging again I will assign our unit movement handle unit movement. Now if I press play we will see that our game works exactly the same. We can still move our units. What happened is that we can add more listeners to this unit selector like the selection of our town. So now to add our town management logic that we had previously, all we need to do is create a game object town UI and a handler of a mouse click that takes in the game object collider. And we said town UI set active if collider is not null and if collider has the tag town. So now if we save it and go back to Unity, we can go to our single game object that I'm using, assign our town manager script, and I can add to the handle mouse click the town manager and the function town manager handle mouse click. And I need to assign the town building panel as the UI. Now if we press play, we will see that our logic again works. We can select the UI for the town when we select the town. We, when we select our uh, character, we can move it, but we have our logic and we didn't have to modify the unit movement. Now, one thing that I forgot to do was uh, this collider can be null, so we cannot get collider the game object. I will need to create a temporary variable selected game object that will check if collider is null, if we will return null, else we are going to get the collider and we can pass it here. So now this will pass a null as well. It took a bit longer to create, to refactor this code from our unit movement system to this unit selector and the town manager, but now we didn't have to deal with this issue of modifying this method, adding code here. Overall, I believe that we have created a much more manageable system and without uh, spending a lot of time on it, 
and now if we want to add more functionality to our classes or maybe we want to add functionality that our uh, characters cannot move on the water all we need to do is to modify our character movement system or unit movement class without having to touch the unit selector or the town management and it is much easier now to prototype further new features for your game instead of cramming everything in a single class again you can do it but it is worth uh, thinking about if maybe a bit more refactoring now can save us much more time later on now i'll want to continue developing this game and i will create a short tutorial series about creating this civilization like game very soon so stay tuned and again, if you want to learn more about adding visual effects to your games, I recommend that you check out Jetelli channel. They have awesome content about sh Unity shaders and visual effects in Unity. Thanks a lot for watching. Take care.